actually we'll we'll, we'll play a video now right yes so that's, uh, that's i'm here to answer questions job. only <laughs> easy job for you uh, so you can sit back um so the last talk will be about the um the state of geo network and um given by florent gravin um, and he has recorded a video and will we'll play shortly. Um, and Florent, he's uh, from France and is a front end and technical leader, but also a geospatial full stack developer at Camp to Camp. And Camp to Camp, I think, is one of the sponsors as well of this conference and a very innovative uh, um, geospatial, open source geospatial development uh, company. And Paul uh, van Gelucht is from the Netherlands, uh, also studied in Wageningen. And he recently started a new job at ISRIC. Uh, he already gave the URL uh, in, in Wageningen as well. And, uh, but he, 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 he's probably most of you know him as he worked the last 10 years at, uh, at GeoCAD, also a very innovative uh, open source geospatial company in the Netherlands, the, 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 well, I should say the main company behind Geo Network and uh, also one of the main sponsors. And, but, and Paul is called core contributor and he's also in the program steering committee of Geo Network, but also in many other always geo projects, including by Geo API. So um, without further ado, I will uh, Play, Take some uh, popcorn. Yeah. Yeah. Play a so, video. Let's see what uh, Florent has prepared for us. It will cover the whole screen now. Um, probably we will go to the back side. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm going to present the State of Geo Network 2021 at Phosphor Buenos Aires. Uh, I'm glad you are here remotely. Unfortunately, I'm not there, neither physically, neither remotely. So I've prepared this talk with Paul, who is going to be there, hopefully, to answer your question at the end of the presentation. Thanks to him. A few words about me. Uh, I'm Florent Gravin. I work at camp to camp in the geospatial division as a technical leader. I'm also a member of PSC of GeneO Network and a contributor to many open source geospatial libraries and softwares. And it's the core of what we are doing at Camp to Camp. Here are my coordinates. If you want to get in touch, I would be pleased to talk about Geo Network or OSGeo in general. So, what's new in Geo Network ecosystems? Actually, many things. Uh, yes, it was a very prolific year. Uh, new projects, new direction, new architecture, new, new UI, many things, many code sprints. Uh, I'm very excited to talk about that uh, today. So let's discover everything during this presentation. But first, let's introduce the new release, the major one, the fourth release of Geo Network. The principal focus was the move from Lutein to Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is a very powerful uh, search engine. And it was really a great step forward to move to, to, to that because uh, it ensures a new uh, potential for the geo network search. First, it's faster, the response are faster, but also the display in the UI is faster because we can customize what we want in the response of Elasticsearch. So it means for each search in the UI, depending on the use case and the context, we can just fetch uh, small and few uh, record fields, which is great for the performances. It's scalable, so it was very crucial for now because Lutein was not uh, duplicable. Uh, and it's great, Elasticsearch, you can have clusters, so you can, uh, yes, scale Elasticsearch in uh, Kubernetes or other rancher ecosystem. And it's great if you want to have uh, good performances on and heavy requests on your server. It's heavily configurable uh, with facets, with boost, 
with many things and it, it brings new features like uh, better suggestions, similar to record, etc. You can find the full presentation in there. Uh, let's quickly bruise to, to this new version. So beside all of that, there was uh, still many user interface improvements uh, to make the interface clean, clear and bruisable. The search has been improved. The suggestions are really improved in there and uh, faster. We focus on the title. There is a boost. You can customize that. So the research is uh, really better. Uh, the facet, you can have new kinds of facet. You can have nested facet. So here it's a value in the field and in there we group them. It's like an aggregation and we can jump in there. There is the negative selection, which is new. You can say, I don't want S3 shape file. There is uh, some um, facet on Lutin uh, queries. So you can just bind a facet on queries and it gives you the amount of, of records that match that. On the, on the metadata page, it, the links have been improved and you can find the similarity record in there and jump in there very easily to bruise your catalog. Uh, it's not the only thing during this year. Actually, many releases, four or five per year, maintenance of uh, the three, uh, third version, 3.12 and 4.05 has been released very uh, um, recently. Um, we have a lot of meetings, technical meetings, uh, to decide the direction, lots of cut print this year, even if there was remotely, we, we try to really keep active uh, on the community. So yes, it was a very prolific year and uh, yes, pretty exciting things to show. Uh, everything quite started at the meeting last year, 2020, very su good success, many participants, many ideas. We dream about what we would like your network to be and uh, two directions uh, came out from these meetings. Uh, we wanted to dream about a new architecture based on microservices and to really focus more on the user experience concerns. I will speak about the microservice architecture first. So the idea is to break the monolith. So GeoNetwork has a big core with a lot of code. Some of it is deprecated. Uh, and it's very hard to split. So the idea, instead of doing a huge refactoring, is to start from scratch new services, pure, clean, and to get rid of old dead code. Uh, the idea as well is that uh, Jiro's network is a mono uh, application. So it means like when you run background tasks like harvesting, exporting, and things like this, it consumes a lot of resources and the search, public search, is slowed down, which is really a pity. So the idea is to split that in many microservices, new services, clean, and, and you can scale each services accord, accordingly. So you will have like harvesters, you, you allow a lot of resources for that, you allocate a lot of resources, and the search is never impacted. Uh, so there is a project on, on GitHub, you can find the sources and the progress. The idea of the architecture is about uh, that. So in the middle, you, in green, you have all the services, the microservices behind a gateway that is provided by the project. And you can, uh, for now, the transition, it still live beside GeoNetwork for API, and you can use the, the um, microservices API from the Geo Network for UI as well. So it's a transition and we are uh, doing more and more services and improving uh, the link between the services, the gateway, the discovery service, the, the authentication and the security. At the moment, there, is three, there are three services, searching, CSW, GeoRSS, indexing, and OGC API, API records, um, which we are talking about right now. 
it's in progress, so more service will come and the refactoring will be better. Harvesting services is is on the on the rail as well. So OGC API record. So I think you have heard about OGC API for the features, for the layers, the style, many things. There is also a um, specification for the records. Uh, so it's new OGC standards and the uh, OGC API record is a microservices and is just implemented off top of Elasticsearch. So all your geo network for catalog is indexed in Elasticsearch and the OGC API record microservice just need Elasticsearch and extract the information from the index to the record document. The idea is to improve the discoverability of geo network um, so we can find the records on Google. We use common formats like schema.org, DCAT, DCAT AP, Inspire. So we try to cover most uh, format we can, so it can be used from every, everywhere. Um, we, we have the DOI for the landing pages that you can find. So this is the example of uh, the page on the right. You can choose the schema you have um, and the output. So it's the way it's, it's done so far. Uh, we have JSON-LD uh, for schema.org, but also for other services like DCAT, etc. And it, it's really great to have this API in front of GeoNetwork for index, so you can serve different purposes than the, the core. Super Harvester, it's a new microservices, it's in development. And the goal is to have a new European meta catalog that harvests all the catalog in CSW. So it's a very new, brand new project uh, whose uh, responsibility to harvest, ingest, index, and validate the record of the whole Europe. A very brief schema on the architecture. Uh, so yes, you have Elasticsearch, you have the Harvester, you have the different schema, etc. Some work has been done also to provide an Inspire dashboard. So based on Elasticsearch and Kibana, you have lots of metrics, charts, data, figures. So you can really monitor your catalog from this UI. Geo Network UI. I was talking about improve the user experience. So we started a new project called Geo Network UI, which is really use case centric. We want to focus on user experience and bring modernity in the interface of Geo Network. We don't have don't want to have a too complex uh, user interface, but sim something simple inspired from open data catalog to bring innovation in the world of uh, metadata. You can find the project on GitHub. Uh, we try to address new use cases, more modern, like open data portals with some data visualization. We want simple edition, landing page index indexing. We want to integrate some components in third party websites. We want to search both in the metadata and in data sets. Uh, we want to have pure UIs. Uh, so all we will try to address all these use cases and in the end we develop GeoNetwork UI uh, which is actually a framework that provides a toolkit to ease the creation of interface, application, components and website around catalog, dataset and metadata. So from this uh, we can easily implement new stuff, new components. So here are the basis of the architecture. We use a framework based on components. We really focus on web component exports for third party integration, server size rendering for the landing pages. We want to use CSS variables to customize uh, the rendering and the layout of uh, for the different use cases. Uh, we use a state management. We use an API generator to interface with GeoNetwork for backend and many things. So there, there is a blog post to talk about that. You can find it here. And now briefly some, uh, some demo about, about that. Uh, so um, first, um, 
the the storybook storybook is great because uh, it allows to really separate the concern the presentation and the logic so people can contribute to geo network even without um, big skills in terms of the core of geo network but just doing presentational components so th there is the storybook you can find like different uh yes dif different um, components that we have uh, we, you can test it you can change the input uh, etc so it's a great uh, showcase another example of implementation is this prototype to toward an open data catalog so you can it's really pure interface um, you can pick a metadata here and you have kind of um, open data uh, visualization with data visualization you can visualize the data in a, in a table you can visualize data on the map you have to export so it's really in the in the trend of open data catalogs and there is another thing that has been developed with geo network ui is the data feeder there is a presentation during the FOSS. so the idea here is to bring wizard component to fill the metadata and then because of its in geo network ui um, this is shareable and this allow you to publish and create a new metadata So many things, very interesting thing in this project. So with the microservices and Geo Network UI, it's the new um, constellation of Geo Network. So you have Geo Network UI, you have many applications, you have web components, you have many things. Geo Network for in the middle as usual. So Geo Network UI can live beside Geo Network 4 for specific use cases. It call the Geo Network for API, all the Geo Network for microservices, and the microservices in there are narrowed to the index or other pieces of Geo Network. There, are, there have been uh, code prints about DCAT2, many things to try to embrace the open data world and not to stick only on Geo and Inspire ISO datasets. So we have done a code sprint and we are trying to do a new interface called Data Hub uh, that uh, is going to gather within Geo Network data, geodata, non geodata, and open data. So good work has been done on the DCA2 standard. So there is a very straightforward and simple edition form in there based on suggestion, on tesory, and on uh, shared resources. Uh, we have also DataViz components in the, that you can saw, see in the storybooks to unphase on the data. So we really try to embrace the open data world and it's uh, an ongoing development. So what's going coming next? Uh, oh, Yes, as you can see, everything from this year, from the Geo Network meeting, is new idea, new concept, new project. So everything is under development. We will release new, the data feeder application has been released, but we will release application uh, continuously from the UI and we will improve the microservices. So we are really at, uh, yes, like the, the early ages of this new uh, constellation and this new architecture of Geo, Geo Network. Uh, so yes, keep in touch to to follow what came out from from that project. Very exciting project, and you can keep an eye on what is next. Link in there to to follow. Have a continuous uh, roadmap and things about what's coming next with Geo Network. Uh, how to participate and collaborate. Uh, you can, yes, find all the resources of the community, so the website, the forge, the mailing list, etc. We are very active, so more and more contribution is great. We can see more and more downloads on the forge. So, yes, it's very uh, great to see that Geo Network is still wo uh, worldwide used. And we really hope that uh, all this new um, direction, this new project, uh, the Geo Network UI and the microservices, 
we really convince you in the in the near future but really keep an eye on that and if you want uh, to help the community you can uh, contribute uh, as you can uh, on uh, the the translation with the uh, trans effects or give your ideas on the issues on github uh, yes thank you very much from all the community i hope you are excited about Geo Network and what we propose for a next future. Thank you and uh, thank you, Paul, now to take the lead for the questions. Bye bye. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Florent, uh, from, uh, from a distance. Um, yeah, Paul will be here to, to answer you, your questions. And uh, we already received some questions in the chat. I will. Uh, uh, I'll start with an easy one. They're all voted in the same uh, category. So the first is, um, is the EU Network 4 compatible with JDK 1.1? Isn't that a very, or with JDK 11? 11. Sorry, <laughs> I, yes. I'm, I left Java JDK 1.1, so <laughs> no, 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 that's not true, but. It's good that I didn't ask for JDK 17. <laughs> 17 okay i don't know what's upcoming <laughs> no but uh, okay. um, no the, the core the geo network 4 uh, core uh, so that's that's kind of the current version is jdk 8 uh, uh, only so i really recommend uh, the open jdk uh, um, uh, container However, the microservices project, which will soon uh, replace uh, most of the components of the, of the core also, is uh, JDK 11 only. So in order to uh, run both in an infrastructure, you, you already need uh, kind of a Docker orchestration with, with microservices um, where you have the newer components on the JDK 11 and the older components on the, on the JDK 8. So uh, now these, these components work together, but they have a different uh, Java environment. So, so but uh, since we now have Elasticsearch and uh, uh, deploying this on, on Docker or, or Kubernetes is, is uh, anyway a, a better option than uh, it was also for scalability. Of course, yeah. We keep that hear, uh, hearing back that, that we all should use Docker. Maybe that's a message I heard in many presentations. And okay, there's, thank you. And there's another question you probably can answer. So is your network compatible with the EU accessibility directive on the accessibility of the websites and mobile applications of public sector bodies? Yes, so um, it's, a, it's a bit of a complicated answer. It's yes and no. Um, it has our, our constant focus because uh, we get these questions uh, a lot from our users. On the other hand, it's, it's also a shared responsibility between uh, the developers of the software and how it is implemented. Because it, it's also dependent, uh, on, for, for example, which color scheme you, you pick as an administrator uh, already can fail this test. So, so it's, in theory, the, the software itself is compatible, but it, it also requires some attention from you as an administrator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a complicated issue. We see it in the Netherlands as well. Um, and the third and probably the last question is, are there any issues with licensing and using Elasticsearch? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a hot uh, topic uh, for almost uh, one and a half year already. Um, um, so, so in a normal usage, when you deploy uh, Elasticsearch yourself, and you, in in your own environment, or or even on on a, on a cloud infrastructure, you you're totally fine with the with the uh, uh, license from Elasticsearch. However, mm -hmm. if you go to a service provider that that offers you this as a hosted service, then then there may be issues. In that case, I would actually recommend to to, to use the the paid version of Elasticsearch. 
Um, mm -hmm. On the other hand, there is Amazon that, that has created this uh, open search uh, project, which is based on, uh, on the Elasticsearch version that was still uh, fully open source. And uh, we uh, try at least to be compatible with that version. There may be some functionality not available, but at least it will work. It will not break. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I just looked at the website. I see there are some uh, changes uh, in 2021. Um, so let's see if there are any other questions in the in the chat. Uh, I think we're we're there, and then we're in 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 time. Um, so I see oh. a question from from Jeff related to ISO one and one one zero. That's the feature catalog, oh, yeah. feature catalog okay. uh, standard. Um, so uh, yes, that uh, that is supported um, uh, in uh, that because that that's functionality that was uh, available since a long time. Or maybe okay. you reference some recent improvements on that, but I'm, I'm not fully aware of that. Okay. Uh, well, I think uh, that uh, concludes uh, this uh, session, uh, these six sessions. And uh, I think we have the icebreaker now. Or is there is there yes. a keynote still? No. No, I okay, think icebreaker. Thanks, uh, Paul and Florent and all the previous speakers in this session for uh, for for their. Uh, well-prepared talks and uh, keeping us up to date and well we'll, we'll see many of you in, uh, in in upcoming sessions so thanks very much and uh, have a good conference